We are going to now develop and build our full Wheatstone Bridge uh, configuration. So let's go ahead. One of the things that you'll see um, is basically this term standard configuration. So standard configuration is when your Wheatstone Bridge is built like this. We refer to these different arms. So arm one, two, three, and four. And again, each of these can have either a strain gauge or a resistor. And if we have basically two strain gauges, we call that a half bridge. If we have one, it's a quarter bridge. If we have uh, four, which is right here, it's a full standard configuration. But again, the key thing is this one, two, three, four. That's how we kind of denote, again, the standard configuration. And we still have this condition, again, if we are null, if our output voltage is zero, we know that we can, uh, our, you know, string, our resistors have this relationship. Now, typically, when you're using a Wheatstone Bridge configuration, we want to choose our resistors and our string gauges such that um, all the resistors are equal. So R1 equals R2 equals R3 equals R4 equals some resistance. But again, that's just kind of standard practice. As long as we kind of are at balance, we're good to go. So let's go ahead and write out the expression and see how, again, we want to get to this idea of how does our change in output voltage, how is it a function of strain? We spent many videos trying to get here, but we're finally going to get close to, or get uh, to that right now today in this video. So my V0 is just going to be this expression right here. Again, same idea, um, two voltage divider circuits. And now I want to see how does my V0 change? And to do that, I'm going to take these partial derivatives. So I want to see how does my expression V0 change if my R1 changes? The R1 plus, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Everything you can kind of see here. So this is the most general case. Here's our expression again for output voltage. And we want to see how does our change in voltage correlate to uh, how, we're all, how, we're all, how will our voltage change? Excuse me. How will our voltage change if we change kind of this each of these resistances? So if we pull each of these arms, there's a strain gauge at each of these. How is my output voltage going to change? So you could take these partial derivatives, do that in Mathematica. You could kind of get to these expressions, and then finally you're going to start to see something very very interesting happen. So let's look. Uh, and again, we just kind of said. Let me go back one page quickly here. So we just said previously that typically we choose our resistors uh, in our, you know, strain gauge, in our Wheatstone Bridge configuration such that they're all equal, even strain gauges or resistors. Um, actually, strain gauges and resistors should be all be equal. Um, so we choose this setup here. Well, if we plug that in, we could dramatically simplify this expression. So if we plug in that R1 equals R2 equals R3 equals R4 equals some resistance R, we can get this simplified expression right here. Now, this should look uh, somewhat, actually not somewhat, very familiar. Or actually, we could kind of deduce uh, something from this. Let's rewrite this. This kind of basically looks like delta V naught over di equals delta R1 minus delta R2 minus delta R3 plus delta R4 over or R. Well, we have our expression previously that my change in or my strain is going to be equal to 1 over F times delta R over R. I can substitute this in. So when I make this uh, kind of change, this expression, you know, uh, this change in expression, I am going to get, again, you know, we have here essentially delta R1 over R1, so or delta R1 over R. So delta R1 over R, epsilon 1. So it is just going to be equal to epsilon times F. So I'm going to make that uh, substitution. And what you'll get is our fundamental expression that we're going to utilize in this class for how we could uh, correlate the output voltage, uh, the change of the output voltage to strain, which is going to be F over 4 times epsilon 1 minus epsilon 2 minus epsilon 3 plus epsilon 4. Now remember, this is the strain measured in each of these strain gauges right here. That's what it's correlating to. And we're going to see in the next, depending on that configuration, we're going to be measuring different kind of strains. The other thing that we need to note at this point is that our strain gauges are, you know, kind of fixed to the surface of a material. So if I have my material like this, they're fixed to a particular surface. So really, they're only going to measure basically plain stress and plain or plain strain effectively. Uh, and we are only going to be able to no uh, measure normal stresses because, again, we're only measuring if our wire decreases or increases. So we are going to be measuring only kind of normal components. We will see that we're going to be able to, if we um, 
basically use uh, a strain rosette where we do a combination of strain gauges, we could then figure out our shear straights and our shear strains and much more on that a little bit later on. But this is our fundamental expression for, that we're going to use that throughout the rest of this class. And you can see we got here with this expression as well. So now we see how we could correlate this to a change in resistance to eventually our delta V naught as a function of strain. That's it. So that is kind of the critical expression that we're going to utilize in this class. And in the next uh, video, we're going to start to get, have some fun and see, okay, uh, if we put a strain gauge in this particular orientation, what, uh, what is the strain I'm going to be measuring? So more on that next time. See you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.